Our today's topic is toponymy and fossil record and in which we will be discussing about the quality of the fossil record. In earlier topics, in, in this topic, we have discussed about that how fossils are formed. Today, we will be discussing that how the fossil record is affected. Is it adequate? And if it is not, then what we can do about it? So, the incompleteness of the fossil record is obvious. And we know that it is an inadequate window of uh, information that we can get for the earlier times. Charles Darwin was the first person to acknowledge that and he said that he used the words imperfection of the geological record his, in his book in 1859. And he said that, of course, we know that they are very important and he used these fossils for his uh, theory of natural selection and evolution. But he knew that these fossil records are in inadequate. In 1972, David Raup explained all the factors that make the fossil record incomplete. And he termed those factors as filters. Now, what is filter? For example, if I uh, have a source of light and I give you a, a yellow filter, you will see the yellow light. You know, if I give you a blue filter, you will see a blue light. Right? So you will say, Okay, it is a blue light, but it is actually the source which is containing different light, only the filter is changing it. Same is the case with the uh, record, the fossil record. There are some filters which are changing that information and how they are changing. And you must be careful when you are studying the paleontology that there are some filters which are changing the uh, information along the way. And one of those, the first is anatomic filter. We do have very excellently preserved fossils of the dinosaurs. But have you ever seen a fossil of a dinosaur with its flesh, with its meat, with all the things, with the skin? Right? So, of course, you have not. And maybe in the recent times, we might find one and or we, we might have already found it. We have plenty of fossils which are in the form of bones. So organisms are likely to be preserved only if they have hard parts or skeleton of some kind. Entirely soft-bodied organisms such as worms and jellyfish are only preserved in rare cases. So we have a very different view of the earth. We think that only hard uh, organisms are present in those worlds, in those ancient worlds, but it is not the case. So this is one of the first filter of the information and the next thing is biological fit filter such as uh, behavior and population size behavior uh, for example there are some uh, small organisms um, a common organism such as rats are more likely to be fossilized than are rare ones such as pandas so why rats because rats are smaller in size and they have short span of life right so panda are very very uh, uh, large, right? So whenever some organism has large size, it has less population. So that means we cannot find the ancient pandas, but we have more chances of finding the fossils of ancient rats. So, uh, and of course they have short span of life as well. That means they will die earlier in short span of life. 70 years is a span of one organism, while another organism has a span of only one year. Right, so that means the 70 generation has passed in those 70 years. Only one organism dead, 70 generations are dead. And you will have more chances of finding those 70, uh, the fossils among those 70 generations. And then there are ecological uh, filters where uh, an organism li lives matters as well. Right, so in our, there is an, uh, another organism which is living on the bottom of the sea or bottom of uh, a lake. And then there are then another organism which is living on some mountain or some beach, right? So in, you can see that if uh, uh, which one has more chances of preservation due to the habitat it is uh, having or the flying animals, for example. The animals that live in shallow seas or plants that live around lakes or river are more likely to buried under sediment 
flying animals do not right so we do not find much of the birds uh, fossils so sedimentary filters uh, some environments are typically sites of deposition it is related to the first point that we have discussed uh, the earlier point in which we had discussed that the where that organism lives here the sedimentary filters where that sedimentation is taking place mountain side versus beach right so mountain have less chances because there is erosion continuous er erosion while the uh, shallow lagoon or lake there is less erosion there is deposition of material and then there are the preservation filters once organism is buried in the sed sediment the chemical conditions must be right for the hard part to survive the destruction of uh, bones or shells by acidic water if there are some acidic waters the water is acidic the bones will dissolve or corrode away after time right so there won't be any fossils but if the conditions are just right the water are not acidic they are alkaline which increase the uh, deposition of minerals in those bones that means there is the there will be less physical movement of those fossils and they will be preserved and then there are diagenetic filters we have discussed what is diagenesis diagenesis are the changes physical or chemical that happen after the death of an organism so here after a rock has formed the rock may be transformed by the passage of mineralizing waters either enhancing the fossil or damaging it right so it happens both way it is two uh, blades uh, it is the two face swords right so it will either uh, 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 make it more uh, strong the fossil is more strong or another thing is that it may destroy the fossil as well and after that the metamorphic filters over the thousands of years we have discussed about the metamorphosis and tectonization fossils do change right so we have seen a picture of a fossil in the previous topics as well in which a fossil was distorted in its shape so those metamorphic uh, filters are changing the uh, our perception of fossils as well over million of years the fossil leafarious rocks might be baked baked or subjected to high pressure in these kind of metamorphic uh, fossils may survive these terrible indignities but they may be destroyed right so either they, they can you know survive that and deformed or they may be entirely destroyed and vertical mo movement filters the burial means rock has been covered by younger rocks right so sometimes what happens that tectonic movement takes place there are some earthquakes right so two plates collided and they just made some mountains right so in here the layers became vertical originally horizontal but when they collided they become vertical right so these vertical uh, movements right so they are also affecting that how we have uh, especially the aging of the fossil because we age the fossil with the help of the layers right so how layer it is deep so uh, those are not uh, very much uh, intact and we cannot have that uh, fossil for a ferrous rock to the earth surface or the fossil remains forever buried and unseen sometimes what happens that they will be buried uh, most of the time and we cannot see those anymore and then there are human filters uh, the fossils are seen and collected by the human beings and sometimes we do not have the time and we cannot uh, we cannot get those fossils all the fossils all the fossils in all the surfaces of the earth we cannot get those fossils we don't have manpower and even if some amateur uh, collectionist he goes there he takes them but ultimately those fossils may not end up in the laboratory they might, might be wasted and may go into the garbage so the fossil record gives us a good outline of the key events in the history of life and uh, we have very much information due to the fossil the understanding um, the history of life with the help of fossils small uh, is a big question right so how can we see that fossils are very small remnant of what once existed so by looking just a tiny example we cannot see that a whole environment in the ancient time worked 
so that means we are just taking the sample and the entire reality in those ancient times we don't know but still we have something to work on with the help of fossils